Okay, one more. It's really, really hard. You know, um, I realize, because I know what I would do. So I talk about, you know, how you should be a good student and things like that. And um, I was a bit of a weasel. So uh, as a student, um, I even tried to find ways to shortcut myself. But knowing that now, um, I know that it gave me a deep understanding of what I'm doing. So for me, it seems obvious if I had a graphing calculator and I was asked to graph using derivatives, I would graph that thing on the graphing calculator first, know what it looked like fully before I started. Because what if I make a mistake and I get to the very end? And then I have like this from seven to 14, that's a seven step process. Who knows where I could have made a mistake? And you know how prone to mistakes I am. So I'm like every step of the way, I would just watch what I'm doing and make sure it matched up. You saw that as we found the derivative, found the position. Oh yeah, we already know this. We saw that on the decimals curve. So it seemed to me that this would be an obvious thing to do, but I found out that 100% of my top one students never used their graphing calculator to do this. They were still on the default mode. And so I thought, I'm a unique person that's a weasel. I would have just weaseled my way through the whole thing. And um, they weren't doing that. And so I used to, I started in, in, implementing this. Because number one, it teaches you what kind of tools you have at your disposal. But number two, it tells you what this is really all about. So accidentally, I was learning, even though I was being a bit of a weasel. So to me, I got, um, th the top was an important point. But you see these points down here? That's a minimum. So these points are also important points. They turn out to be critical points. So. Um, I can quickly put the arrows. I'm not going to put the steps on this one. We're going to go through this more quickly. So the next thing is to put the arrows on there. Put the arrows. I see it's decreasing, increasing. And you see that there's a change in the slope. It's decreasing and then increasing. And then it's decreasing after this point, And then it's increasing after that point. So I can see that. So these a CP is called critical point. It's my shortcut for critical point. So a bad question to ask me the day before the quiz or maybe the morning of the quiz is, hey, what does CP stand for? <laughs> not good, <laughs> not good question. <laughs> and we call this a local max um, because it's not the ultimate max. You see those little, like the little daredevil things going up, the ears going up on the side. So those things are much bigger than this one. So we call this a local max. We do care about that though. Um, you know, for example, um, Denmark has had you know, our BMI has just gone up, prevalence has gone up like this, it's perfectly monotonic curve, but their BMI mm -hmm. has gone up and then down and then up again. So you could look at that up part where it went and say, why was there a bump there? What happened? Was it the mothers of the babies that were born in that era? What happened there? So you can start looking at what is wrong by looking at these bumps, bumps or asking questions. So local maxes and mins are important. And when I was uh, young in Calc 1, myself, I did not know the difference between what they taught the relative or local max, the same thing, and the actual max. I had no idea. I don't know somehow I missed that. But that's what it is. It's just a local bump. Concavity, I can see it. It's concave down. Can you see it? It's kind of like, like this. It's curved. And then concave down again, concave down. So what should the sign of the second derivative be? Negative all the way through. So I can draw you my slope chart. Look how effortless it is by looking at my graph. Slope chart, decreasing before minus two, increasing after um, between minus two and zero, decreasing between zero and two and increasing after. I can see it. And so I've just drawn a shape, the shape of the graph using the slope, the slope chart. That's what it looks like. So when I do my y prime derivative, that's what I should get. Concavity should be the same as before. It's Negative all the time, so it'll be concave down all the time. Okay, any questions? So there's no points of inflection. There's no change of concavity. Okay, here's my Y. Here's the analytical work. We're at step seven now. If I leave off all the steps and leave out the dirty details, we're there that fast. I know what my answers are supposed to look like, and now I'm going to pretend like I don't know them. <laughs> Why is this thing? Y prime is this thing. That's from chain rule. I'm going to speed through this. We've uh, done chain rule several times. It's actually your best, best rule. Even the other section that I graded, it's their best rule. Um, there we have. Um, notice I rewrote my derivative with the positive exponents because you have to do stuff with this thing. You have to do algebra with it. You're better off keeping all the exponents positive. 
So I'm gonna, I just rewrote what I had on the previous slide if you're taking notes. That's what I had in the previous slide up there. Just copied it. I want to know where y prime is zero. The only way a fraction can be zero is if the numerator is zero. So uh, I just set the numerator only equal to zero, and what do I get? Only one place. X equals zero is the only place where the numerator is equal to zero. You see it? The y value at x equals zero, that's a bit tricky. Some, some of your calculators might not do this for you because um, they won't take, somehow they won't do the fractional powers with negative numbers in it. I did it by hand. Um, this, if you use a lot of exponents, turns out to be cube root of negative 4 squared. Negative 4 squared is 16. Um, cube root of 16 turns out to be cube root of 8 times, 8 times 2 is what I meant. I, this is actually incorrect. Let's see what if I what we got on decimals. Fifty two. So I guess I should be getting fifty two here as the y value. Okay, so I should get fifty two. I'm gonna clean that up before I put it out onto um, I'll put a little note into the YouTube video. Okay, so another place you can get critical points. You saw those minus two zero and the two zero, there was something happening there too. Remember, it looked like a Mickey Mouse hat. So uh, another place you can get that is from the zeros in the denominators. So you set the denominator equal to zero as well. Cube both sides, and you get x squared minus 4 is equal to zero. Factor it, and so you get x equals plus and minus 2, which we already saw on the decimal graph. Plus and minus 2 were the two x values where it was kind of spiking, and then the very top was at x equals zero. So those, I'm getting the important points. And I got to find the y values. It turns out the two y values are zero, but I already knew that. Remember my original graph? I already saw that. So it's matching up. And when it didn't, when I didn't get the 52 that I saw on the decimals, I knew something was up. So it's like a cross check. So um, those are the x values of the critical points. And now I need to make the slope chart. And look how hard this is. I have to plug in points, four points, in between each one of those regions. It's a pain in the butt. So I plugged in minus 1,000 first because it's so far to the left. I was hoping that I could cheat and find the value. Um, so here's so minus 1 is between minus 2 and 0. 1 is between 0 and 1. And 1,000 is after the value of 2. So I just chose those values. Um, at 1,000, all I needed to know is that it's positive. I can see it's positive by just plugging in. If I plug in 1,000 here, it's huge and positive. If I plug in 1,000 here, it's going to dwarf the minus 4, so this will be positive. So the whole answer will be positive. Over here, it'll be the same thing as over here, but it'll be a minus sign, minus 2,000 on top. So that will be negative. These I actually put into a calculator to work it out, and it turns out that it's positive and then negative. So I get the slope chart, which is a mirror of my slope chart. I already know what it's supposed to look like. OK, questions about this? Joe? I know one is supposed to fill out as first. Yeah, all of this has to be filled out. Right, the whole process has to be filled out. Okay. So um, the way we used to do it is just step 7 to 14. So it's all analytical. But what would happen, it would be a bloodbath, an absolute bloodbath. Everybody's answer would be wrong. And you're looking at, everybody has a different graph, right? It was a mess. But once I started doing it this way, everybody got it right. <laughs> no, if you know it's positive. Right, right. I might ask you a question on the homework, like how do you know it's positive? So you get used to doing this. So the, um, my students told me this was a little bit tricky to do that because I do it so quickly. Um, I just care, I just, I mess me the weasel and I think that I just don't want to get that number if I don't have to. So if I know it's positive, I'm done. Okay, any other questions? Yeah. So um, what I did is, I'm not going to go further into this, I'm going to end with this one, but um, what I did is I said, oh, forget it. I found the second derivative. It's a quotient rule. I had a chain rule inside it. It was bad. I took that thing, 
and I put it in decimals and I plotted it and it came out entirely negative. So it's always concave down, right? So I don't need to draw anything more. Um, ooh. So I can just come in here. Actually, I have it the other way around. It should be concave down. Ne always negative, concave down. And then the slope chart is really where you get your graph. These were the important points, and up there should be 0, 0.62. And then here it goes up and down. So let me put that as a text box in here. So obviously made a spine error somewhere. Okay. So that's it. I mean, that's it's pretty straightforward. There's nothing to really understand. Um, that's what you do. You put it all together. So step 7 to 14 are as if you didn't see the graph and you do all the slope charts. But I'm going to ask you to do this in two parts. And this is why I didn't want the, our final to be uniform. I want all the answers up front on one page so you know everything which is going to take you two seconds to do, right? You see how fast I could do this. Just draw the arrows, draw the slope chart, concavity. I could see it all at once. Then I want you to go to the analytics, and that way you have a way to go back and see, am I right? Am I right? Is it going down the same? And the homework will be set up that way, too. I'm going to put, you know, draw the graph, you know, which one of these are the slope chart based on the graph, which, how do I get this? I'll ask you some questions so it's easy for me to see that you actually can just analyze everything from the graph itself. And then we'll go to the analytical part. And I think it does give you something. It just connects what you're doing with the procedures to what you're doing with the graphing. But ultimately, the graphing stuff is what's important. Looking, you look at so many graphs. Um, even my pediatrician had all these graphs, and we were talking. You know, as soon as I said my daughter's in the fifth percentile, and he went right over to the CDC graphs and he looked right there. So he's looking at the graphs too, and he's just a practicing pediatrician. He's not a research pediatrician. So I think that that's, that's what you need. That's the skill you need. Okay, any questions about how to do any of this? All right.